with just a little selfie to welcome the conference. So if everybody waves, yay, all the way over. We talked a lot today about belonging and connection and feeling loved and feeling secure and happy. And that's very much the cornerstone of the circle of courage. As a youth worker, when we try to connect with that and create that sense of belonging, that's a real battle. We are an expanding service. We're an innovative service. And we are here to change and meet the needs of children and young people. There must be bits in our work that's belonging and we are good at that, we are very, very good at that, but it has to be balanced with mastery, independence and generosity. So one of the things we've asked them to do is have a good discussion about the circle of courage and how they embed it in their practice. We engage the young people uh, about where the model is, where they're at first. It's going to support our young people. We can be moving forward. Developing their mastery skills, help engage young people and reach those that are hard to reach. It's identifying new areas of practice. Drugs and alcohol, mental health of young people. Develop a project that's fairly long term. They can then become a strategy group. We're going to be accessible, be present. Bring it together and make it relevant. The life skills that, that we have sort of developed. Knowing that they're actually learning skills and trying to capture um, their understanding of what sort of courage means. To let young people be welcomed. It's just really good getting everybody's points of view across. We've had a lot of discussion with people sharing. And we're creating a new sense of community. It enables us to reflect on aspects of our work. To start networking and connecting. conference really is about reflecting and engaging. It's also about embracing the change and we really want to see how you do that and how you take that forward. An evidence base is important and it's important that we know in terms of best practice across the world what we can learn from others, what others can learn from us and how we can keep developing the service. And if this is not a learning profession, if this isn't a profession which says, we don't know what we do, but how do we find answers to it? And how do we from what we do? Then nobody is. Our common purpose was, we wanted a safe city and a positive atmosphere for our young people where they were treated with respect and they were healthy and well. Things don't always work out the way we planned them. And some little princesses don't get their happily ever after. But what the story does represent is a true picture of the domestic abuse that many, many young people face in their everyday lives. Daniel's story began with high expectations of life. But more often than not, high expectations can leave us feeling hurt, afraid, empty. It can ruin our self-confidence and our self-worth. But all stories have a wee bit of magic. And in this story, it was a magic of true friendship that helped Danielle take that final step to leave. A step to many of you may appear to be small, but in reality, it's the most courageous thing any young person can do. And in Danielle's case, it was a difference between life and death. Now many of you may be sitting there wondering, how do I know so much about this story? My name is Danielle. This is my story. The bottom line of modern society is that it is putting forward challenges which people don't have answers on the stocks for. In other words, people are being asked to do what they don't know how to do. And not, that, is, as, that must be most true for youth workers, or at least for people who are dealing with young people. 
because young people are usually the front face of that change. They're usually the people who are bringing that change forward. And if this is not a learning profession, if this isn't a profession which says, we don't know what we do, but how do we find answers to it? And how do we, from what we do, basically try to develop principles or develop practice from it? Then nobody is. A lot of this stuff actually can happen without our staff and our volunteers. So, do you know, actually embedding that circle of courage within our own staff team is really a priority first. So the, gener the generosity really starts with us. This is an example of how these young people have mastered their own ability to cope with change, resolve conflicts, reflect on their own experiences and problem solve by listening and learning from each other and those around them. A conference like this is really helpful from the point of view of sharing experience among the youth workers and the opportunity to do that, but not only with youth workers, also a very joined up approach with the Department for Education. Because the youth service is growing, there are so many staff teams, it's important to have events like this so there's connections, people are discussing what they're doing, getting ideas. For me, it's been a privilege. Um, it's a great place to be in terms of leading these um, 230 staff members um, and it's very, very encouraging for this authority. We all live and work in different parts of the country and we don't often come together as one, as one big grouping and they come together and realise that you're part of a bigger thing. To give them opportunities to reflect, to engage with each other and to discuss how they can take forward um, services and opportunities to support um, the better outcomes for children and young people. Through the power of one, the relationships they build with children and young people can have lasting positive effects. That's what we really hope this conference can achieve.